Okay, TV Production Guy here, back with another Final Cut Pro tutorial, a basic Final Cut Pro tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be talking about some more advanced work in the Motion tab and working with Live Type. Alright, let's start by opening up Final Cut Pro. And we're going to start a new sequence. So let's come into our bin, we'll right click, come to New Sequence. We'll title this uh, Background double box. Okay, let's double click to open that sequence. I'm going to come down here. I'm, I, I like to have my sequence a little bit bigger, so I'm going to hit Shift T to make my sequence bigger. And what we want to do with this one is we're going to have a background image, and then I'm going to have two boxes using the motion tab, have a split screen with the two boxes on the background. I'm going to create the background by going into live type. Live Type is a great program that integrates with Final Cut Pro if you've bought the Studio Series. So I'm going to come down to Live Type, I'm going to open it up, and within Live Type they do a great job with fonts and other things like that, but they also have these textures. And if you come to these textures, you can see different ones, Liquid, and you can click on them. And you can use them as background images and they're very good. I'm going to come to Smoke, and I'm going to come to Fog Machine, and I have this smoke up here. I'm going to apply this to a mat, I mean a track, I'm going to apply this to a new track and I will come to the timeline of this and drag it out to about 20 seconds. Well, we'll go to about 11 seconds. I'm going to fit this to the timeline window and I will pull this render arrow to the very end. Now I have smoke floating across the back of the screen. Next thing we're going to do is before we, to render this out, we're going to go to uh, Edit, and we'll go to Project Properties, and we want to click Render Background. We'll click OK. Now to get to this into Final Cut Pro, we need to save it. So we'll do a File, Save As, and I'm going to save it into my bin that we're working with this on. We'll just call this Smoke. And once you save it, you get this little icon up here at the top. And what you can do with that icon is, is you can drag this directly into Final Cut Pro. And it takes a second, it pops over, we can open it up, and here it is in our bin. So I'm going to put this down on my timeline, I'll set an in in the beginning, an out at the end, and I'll grab it and overwrite edit to the, th to the timeline. And now I have this smoke background. Now it's not filling, it's filling a 4x3 screen, it's not filling the full 16x9 screen. So what we'll do is we'll double click on it, open the motion tab, and I'll size it up to fit the screen. So now I have a nice smoke layer as my background. Now I'm going to come to up to my bin and I'm going to open up my training one here. I'm going to go to Ghost Ship. I see I have the Ghost Ship sign again. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a, a double box with another shot. So first I'm going to lay this shot down. I'll come to my timeline. I'm going to turn off the audios because we just don't need them and we won't lay them down. I'm going to right click above video line one and add a track. This is adding a second video layer. So I'll grab my V1 connection here and plug it in to my second video. So my video from preview, V1 from preview is plugging into V2 of my timeline. Okay, so I have my I have my in and my out set in my preview. I'm going to pick this up and drop this down in the timeline. I'll put the smoke, connect the smoke to it. And now what I'll do is I'm going to open this up and this is going to be our advanced motion tab. I'm going to come into motion and I'm going to make this into a double box with another picture. So I'll scale this down and I'll actually crop it. We'll open up the crop and I'll crop it down 14 on the left side. Go to the, to the right, I'll go 14 on the right side and now it's a little bit smaller. What I'll do is I'll put this box up in here. So now that's a floating box behind the wheel. Now you can tell I need some rendering so it's going to be tough for this to do. What I'll also do is I'll come back up into my crop. I'm going to put a 29 feather on it so it feathers the edges a little bit. Okay, I'm going to pick another piece of video, this guy popping out that we have. 
and I'm going to put this as the third layer. So I'll come back up above V2 here. I'm going to right click, add a track. Now I have a third video layer line in my timeline. So I'm going to take this V1 from that is the preview right up in here, and I'm going to attach it to V3 for video line three. We'll drop this shot down, and we'll just measure it accordingly so everything fits right in this timeline. I'll double click it to open it up in the preview and I'll come to the motion tab. I'll scroll down again. Same thing, I'm going to open up the crop. Crop about 14 off the left. I'll do the same for the right side, come to about 14. And now I'm just going to maneuver this where I want it. And there you go. I have two a double box shot on top of a moving cloud background. Since I can't render this you know, through without seeing it very roughly, I can come up here to get rid of this orange line so it's rendered all the way through. I can go Sequence, Render All. Won't take long. And now I have my double box image of the two shots on top of a background. Now you can do this with, you can make tons of different backgrounds in live type and you can use these to spice up your video and uh, do different things with your video and then also use different boxes and other things and, and move these around. Another advancement you can do is say I wanted to take these boxes, come into my motion tab with the first one, I'll set a keyframe in the beginning for the center and then I'll come to the end and I'll set a keyframe at the end and now I'll take this and move this up. I can hold the shift key and I'll keep it in a straight line and I can come to the second channel and do the same thing. Set a keyframe for center, come back to the beginning, set a keyframe, come to the end, set the keyframe, and I can have this one drag down. So now I have two moving boxes over top of the background. Again, it will make it a little bit easier to watch by rendering it. And let's watch this through. And there you go. This is TV Production Guy, signing off.